Howdy y'all. If you all are like us, you've probably been sitting in your recliners looking at your seed books all winter, ready for spring. And uh, today we're going to show you what we got in the mail today. We got our order from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And we're going to show you what we got. First we've got Bull's Blood Beets. And uh, we've never grew this variety of beets. But we love uh, pickle beets. And my wife is going to be making some homemade baby food this year out of some of our carrots and beets and other vegetables. So we're really excited to give these guys a try. Alright, here we have uh, one of the free seeds we got with Baker Creek. You get free seeds in every order. And this is Brunswick cabbage. And we've never grew this type of cabbage, but we're going to be starting these in our little greenhouse here in the next few days. Alright, here we have the two kinds of carrots that we bought this year. This is a, a St. Valerie carrot, and they get about 12, 10 to 12 inches long. And uh, there's pretty good diameter. They're 2 to 3 inches around. And uh, these are a Kyoto, and they get about 10 to 12 inches long. And they're, But they're a Japanese carrot, and they say they grow really well in the fall and winter, so we're going to be trying to plant some of these in the next little bit, hopefully uh, see how good they do. We're trying to grow lots of carrots this year because uh, we want to make homemade baby food. And uh, my wife's also going to can a lot of mixed vegetables for vegetable soup. Uh, she cans a lot of vegetable soup and chili, so uh, in the wintertime, while you've already got it made, you just grab out a jar and heat it up, and you get running to the store looking for the stuff to make it. Alright, here we have three kinds of cucumbers we bought this year. We have uh, Chicago pickling cucumbers, which I've always grew these, and I really like making pickles with them, because if, you, if you pick them every day, you get a lot of nice little pickles that make good whole pickles. And uh, here we have tender green burpless, and uh, I really love these. They don't have no acid in them, and uh, they're really good for eating raw, and uh, for eating with a salad. Or I've made pickles with these too. They make good pickles, but we like these the best just for eating. And these are uh, Market More 76, and they're similar to a straight eight, but I like these better. Seem like they don't get as bitter as quick, so we really like these. All right, here's a, a, some lettuce that we bought from Baker Creek. And this is the Black Seeded Simpson. And uh, I grew this about as long as I've been gardening. And uh, the main thing we do with this is we call it killed lettuce. We pick it and we fry bacon and pour the hot grease over the lettuce and eat it with green onions and fried potatoes and stuff. And it is really good. And uh, this is really good for that and good for sandwiches. And it's a leaf lettuce. It don't make a head, so... Uh, it's really tender, delicious. Alright, here we have the okra that we bought this year. It's uh, Gold Coast, and uh, we've never grew okra. Our, uh, one of our uh, neighbors down here grows okra and gives it to us every year. So this year we thought we'd try our own, so we don't know uh, really how good it'll do, but we're going to give it a shot. Here we have three types of peas that we bought. And uh, we used to plant a lot more peas than what I have this year. But this year we're focusing on quality and not quantity. And I'm going to try to raise as much in as little space as possible. And uh, there's an old saying that says, He who sows thickly gathers thinly, and he who sows thinly gathers thickly. So we're going to try to, we've got three packs of peas here. And uh, we're going to see how good we can do by sowing these. And giving them enough room and a good soil and we'll get as much off of these three packs as I would if I planted a half a pound just in the old dirt in the garden. So uh, we have Oregon sugar pods and I've grew these before last, I think last year and they do really good and I uh, get a lot, of, I got a lot of peas off these last year, just a small amount. And these we've never tried. These are uh, Green Beauty and they are supposed to be like Four, five, and six inch long, and they're still supposed to be a snap pea, and we eat the hull and all. But we don't like uh, shell peas. And uh, these, my wife Lakin got. She's going to grow these inside in a pot. These are Tom Thumb, and uh, they're only supposed to get like six, eight inches tall. So uh, we're excited to see how they turn out. All right, here we have two kinds of hot peppers we're growing this year. These are Hungarian hot wax pepper, and these we use in a lot of canning, 
and we pickle a lot of peppers and uh, these are good just to eat too with a sandwich or something and uh, here we have uh, our jalapenos we're going to try this year and these are called Craig's Grande and these get like six inches long we've never grew these before and uh, we use these to can with tomatoes and uh, use them in chilies and soups and such and uh, we're really excited to see how these jumbo jalapenos do okay for our sweet peppers uh, this is your standard uh, banana pepper and uh, like a, the hot Hungarian hot wax we can a lot of these and pickle them and uh, they're good just to eat and uh, we use these for a lot of things and uh, you can't go wrong with the banana pepper they're a staple in any garden all right here we have some rhubarb seeds that I bought these are Victoria rhubarb and uh, I've never grew rhubarb by seed I've planted several plants and I've had some success with it, but I really wanted to try out uh, growing it by seed. And uh, I love strawberry rhubarb pies, so I'm hoping to have, which it probably won't happen this year. I think rhubarb normally you get a good harvest the second year, but hopefully in the next few years we'll have lots of rhubarb to make pies and jellies. All right, here we have our summer squash, which is zucchini and straight neck squash. And uh, we, these are two of our favorite things in the garden. Uh, we take and we cook these with butter and we fry them and we put them on the grill. And uh, also, we love zucchini bread too. Zucchini bread is awesome if you get some big zucchinis that you can't, that ain't really good for frying or anything because the seeds are so big. So uh, you can't never go wrong with zucchini and straight neck squash. Alright, here we have our butternut squash. These are Waltham and uh, this is one of my favorite things that we grow. Uh, I always have loved sweet potatoes baked with brown sugar and butter but when, since I've started growing uh, butternut squash I would just assume have a butternut squash as any sweet potato you have. And they are super good cut up and put in, veg in your vegetable soup. Uh, we I had never tried that until this year and it was amazing. And uh, I think my wife is going to make some baby food out of these as well. And uh, these are super easy to grow. I plant them in the bottom of my corn patch and just let them go. And then uh, we pick them and we'll put them on the shelf and uh, we'll have a, our cellar finished this year. And we're going to store them in the cellar. And we kept some of these on the shelf almost a full year last year and cut them open and they were still as good as the day I harvested them. Alright, here we have the three types of pumpkins we're going to grow this year, which uh, these are all edible pumpkins. We ain't growing anything that's just for looks. These are all edible. And here we have a Jaredale, which is a greenish blue pumpkin. And we have these uh, flat white boar. And we have one called Long Island Cheese. And they're all supposed to be good to eat and to bake pies. And, and uh, we're going to try to store some of these in our cellar this year as well. Now we're going to get into the tomato varieties we bought. And uh, the first one is out of the pink variety of tomatoes. This is a mortgage lifter. And uh, I've grew a lot of the pink tomatoes before, like the Arkansas Traveler, the pink Oxheart, and Brandywine. And uh, the mortgage lifter seems to be the, probably one of my favorite ones that we've grew. These, I've always got lots of fruit. And they're always nice size, about a pound or so. And they're always just really nice tomatoes. And they're one of my favorites to grow. Alright, here we have some of the purple tomatoes that we bought. And these are probably the, the best tomatoes we've ever grew on the homestead. These are Cherokee purple and black creme. And uh, we got growing these from my cousin, who is also our neighbor. She grew these and started giving them to us. And everybody fell in love with them. They are super sweet, and they they bear heavy. And uh, we have to, these until frost every year. And I even have some the green ones we have to pick at when it starts frosting. And uh, these may be purple, but these Cherokee purples make some killer salsa. And uh, you can't go wrong with neither one of these. They're the best eating tomato you can get. You can can them. You can eat them. Make salsa. Anything you want to do, they're perfect. If you want to just sit down with a knife and a salt shaker, 
They are absolutely the best tomatoes that you can grow as far as we are concerned. Alright, next we have our canning varieties that we're going to grow. We've never grew uh, this variety. This is a Ten Fingers of Naples. And they're similar to Aroma. They grow in big bunches and just they're supposed to bear really heavy. And uh, we use all these in canning and juicing and making paste and anything you want to can with tomatoes. Salsa. And uh, we love canning tomatoes. We can a lot of them with uh, jalapeno peppers to use in soups, chilies, and about anything. And uh, here we have one that's a tomato Bella, Bella Lux. I can't hardly pronounce it. But they are really meaty tomatoes and really good for canning. And uh, this and I've grew for years, it's a Bonnie's Best. And you can't really go wrong with canning with the Bonnie's Best. They're just a good hearty tomato. Alright, here we have the bicolor tomatoes that we grow. And uh, these are from West, originated in West Virginia. These are a hillbilly or flame. And these here are one of our favorites. These are gold medal. And they have, they are, uh, the hillbilly is more of a marbled look, inside and out both. But the gold medal uh, seems like the ones we grew last year was more controlled, like the outside was yellow and the red was inside more. And uh, these are the closest thing we have found to a variety that my wife's grandfather used to grow. Called They called them uh, yellow red hearts. And uh, we can't find the seeds for them anymore, so if anybody out there has the, the has or know of any uh, yellow red, true yellow red hearts, please let us know. But these are the closest thing we have found to them. And uh, we really would like to find some that's the true thing. But these are really good and we're really close to them. Alright, here we have a couple of cherry varieties and just some kind of wild looking tomatoes that we're wanting to try this year. These are blue cream berries and they are yellow with the little purpley looking tops. And they're supposed to be really sweet and delicious. And they're a cherry variety. And these are more like a grape tomato. And these here uh, are Brad's Atomic Grape. And they have, uh, they are every different color. Purple, red, green, yellow. And they're all striped and they look really wild. So we're anxious to see how these look. And uh, these are uh, black on the outside. Yellow one and red both on the inside. And these are called Lucid Gym. And these are a new variety at Baker Creek. And uh, we are super excited to see what these look like whenever they are on the vine. And uh, last but not least, we have our sunflower seeds. And uh, these are beautiful in a garden, but we mainly grow them for our chickens. They're really high in protein. And if you go to buy these in the store, they are super expensive. So we have uh, Mammoth Gray Stripe and Autumn Beauty. And these mammoth gray stripes, they get like 12 inch heads on them, so that's tons of sunflower seeds per head. So we're really excited to grow lots of these for the chickens. And uh, we order uh, seeds from all over the place and buy plants. And Baker Creek is one of our favorite places to get things. Every one of their products is heirloom, and you can save the seeds from these, any of these. And you have these seeds from now until you lose the seeds. I mean, you keep saving them and you keep them for the rest of your life. So that's why we love the heirloom seeds. You always have them. You buy them one time and they're yours. So, uh, as always, please like and subscribe. And comment below and tell us what you'd like to see in future videos. And uh, God bless and go forth and homestead.